All right. How are we doing? I just, one thing I'm missing here. <laughs> Welcome to live stream number 170. We made it. A little bit early here. If you're watching the recording, I will not blame you for kind of like just fast forward a little bit. Uh, making sure that, uh, you know, you don't waste your time. Um, just fast forward a couple of minutes. Uh, we will start right on top of the hour here at 3 p.m., right when the, the counter there gets down to about zero. Um, and then uh, then we'll jump onto it. Just want an opportunity to uh, just start out here and just uh, thank you guys because we already got some people in here. Absolutely appreciate it. Uh, you guys are taking the time to join these uh, live streams. Trying to do these um, every weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern, except when I'm traveling. Makes it a little bit hard. Uh, I can see that we got uh, Matt Sears here, uh, Rifted, Swine, Randy, Jurgen, Rick, Rich, and uh, Ditzies. I'm butchering names. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, today's topic is how to make a better design layout. Um, we are going to use... Um, a sawhorse um, that my good friend and my hero, Jimmy DeResta, uh, modeled up a long time ago. Uh, you will find the description for that video um, or the link to that video down in uh, the description of this video here. Um, 37 people in one minute. That is pretty awesome. We are up on the top of the hour. If you're watching the recording, minute and 27 seconds, uh, then we, um, we are on. Um, really appreciate all you guys joining in here. We got Germany, we got Michigan. I'm coming to Michigan soon, uh, I think. Know my office. We're gonna have a general design workshop there soon. More detail to come. Uh, Susant Kumar, how you doing, man? Thank you for joining. Uh, Melvin, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, Larry, thank you everybody for taking the time to join uh, to join all these. Um, Free Free Story asks, have you ever covered curve adjustment for laser cutting? I have not. That might be a good, uh, that might be a good topic for a live stream. Uh -huh. I should write that one down. Um, really appreciate George's here. Montreal, Francius, I'm also coming to Montreal, I think, uh, soon, within the next month or so. So Novi and Montreal for some workshops next week. It's Chicago for generative design workshop, all that cool stuff. All right, we're counting down here. Um, I'm gonna jump on, but I just really wanted to just take a minute, just letting you guys coming in. Really appreciate you taking uh, the time to, uh, to join these live streams. It means the world to me, friends. Really appreciate it. Uh, Bob is here. Um, yeah, that's it. We are up on the top of the hour. <laughs> I gotta get on like five minutes instead of three minutes. Let me just uh, jump over here and uh, get rid of the timer. And then uh, three, two, one, we're good to go. Maybe, there we go. Hey everybody, <laughs> my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for joining live stream number 170. Today, we're gonna talk about a better design layout. Um, this was something that some of you guys probably already know. It goes under under many names. Sketch layout, master, modeling, tips. It's something that I wish that I had gotten into um, earlier on in my CAD career. So that's what I wanna that's what I wanna share with you uh, today. It should be super exciting. Uh, hopefully you guys will uh, will pick something up. Again, my name is Lars Christensen. Truly appreciate you taking the time to watch these live streams. Trying to do these every weekday at 3 p.m. Eastern. That's the same time as in New York City. Um, except when I'm traveling, I can't make it. This is just an attempt to add a little bit more value to uh, your Fusion experience. So today we are going to uh, model up uh, something similar to this here. Um, a sawhorse style... Um, style. So, I have borrowed this uh, from my hero, Jimmy DeResta. Um, I left a link down in the description area of this video for this specific video where Jimmy DeResta uh, makes a sawhorse. You should check it out. You should subscribe to his channel. One of the things I love about um, Jimmy DeResta is that every time I watch one of his videos, I pick something up that I was like, huh, 
I really didn't know how to do that or that was a cool way to do that. Really, what I'm trying to do with these live streams if you're using uh, Fusion 360. So definitely check out uh, Jimmy's channel. That's also where I got the idea for this sign, by the way, that a video is coming up on that. Um, but what I'm going to talk about is I, it's called many names. I like to call it sketch layout or design layout, but it's really uh, using um, kind of sketches to lay out something like this that has multiple components and drive it out of sketches. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get into uh, to, to modeling uh, this up. Let's close this one out here. A blank sleigh inside of, uh, of Fusion 360. Um, now, quickly, this sawhorse is going to be an assembly, meaning um, a lot of different components. Um, and um, there's a lot of different ways you could model this up, but this is my favorite way to do that. I'm literally just going to start a sketch in, I don't, I don't have this as an assembly yet. Um, you would have seen me in other videos. I would right click here and start creating new components for every single item. But another way to do it is just to start out with a raw sketch. That's going to be kind of like laying out the framework for your, your design. So I'm going to go over here on this uh, front face and I'm using, when I'm saying front, I'm using the view cube as my reference. And I'm just going to kind of like sketch out the frame for this sawhorse. Uh, so I'm going to left click, then I get some dimensions and we're going to make this saw 800 millimeters tall by, I'm going to hit the tab key. Um, it's going to be 635 uh, kind of like long. Hit enter and kind of scroll out here. Um, so now you can see we kind of have this um, rectangle here. Um, I'm going to use uh, the, the midpoint here. Uh, midpoint uh, reference over here. I don't use that one too often. Midpoint from this line. So that's the midpoint of this line to the origin. So what have I just kind of done? Let me turn the origin on. Um, this is the origin. This is kind of like going to be the 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 flaw in my in my design i've kind of created a sketch that kind of is going to be the side view uh of our saw or a saw horse and i could name i like to name these sketches so i could name this uh so i'm gonna slowly left click on that and i could call that side view uh saw horse for example Right, so now we have that as a reference. And then I, I'm gonna go ahead and just create another sketch. And, and I know that we are, we're used to, if you're new, to kind of start extruding, but I think you will, will get from a second what I'm trying to get at here. I'm laying out kind of the perimeters of my design. So I'm gonna create a new sketch. Now, instead of doing on this plane here, I'm gonna do it on kind of the right plane over here. And uh, Jimmy um, uses a two by four. What any of my, my metric friends don't get too confused. Um, it's not even two by four in the real world either. Uh, so I'm just gonna make another rectangle and we're gonna make this one 40 by 100. Just like that. So now we kind of, and I see how I'm sketching out on the side here. I do that uh, quite a bit. And I will try to do that a lot through this design. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to do another midpoint and um, I'm going to do that like right from the top here down to the top of that side rectangle. And um, and then I could actually I could actually stop the sketch right now. So we have kind of two sketches. And if this is brand new for you, just hold on a second. Don't get too confused. It's OK. You will get it in a second. Um, this sketch here, I'm going to then call that. Maybe it's my right side side, and then I'm gonna call. You could call it right side sawhorse. Um, I might would actually call this right side profile. You will see in a second. So it's still inside of one component. We got two sketches. Now I'm gonna go back into this right side profile here. I'm gonna right click on it and just hit edit sketch. We're back into it, and then I'm gonna start. Um, then I'm going to start kind of like adding a little bit of information to this one. 
So I'm gonna go up and click on a, a line tool and I'm just gonna snap a line into this bottom and go up here and just place another line over here. Um, and then I could start adding some dimensions. So I know I want from this side to this, I'm gonna make that 10. And you will see just in a second why we're getting at here. I'm gonna make this five. And don't forget that uh, we're always looking for this to be fully defined, right? To be black. So grabbing a point, dragging around will kind of give you an indication of what needs to move. So I'm actually gonna use a uh, perpendicular constraint. I don't use that one very often to make this in 90 degrees. And uh, that means that now all we have is an angle. D for dimension, hit one line, hit another line, and we're gonna make this one 75. This is, if you're watching the video that I have down in the description, actually, don't watch the video yet. Um, wait till this. I'm done with this live stream, and then in the comment area, uh, type in uh, all the things that I missed out of the video. That could be a fun game. You will see this is fully defined, but it's kind of good to extrude it. Uh, but I'm actually going to have one on the other side over here. So I'm just going to hit L for line and just draw a line here so I have something to uh, mirror across. So now I'll go back to sketching and we're going to do a lot of mirroring in this one. But this is a sketch mirror. So sketch mirror, I'm going to select the two entities, what I'm going to mirror across, what's going to be this line, and now you will see we kind of get a mirror notch over here. Again, when you watch the, uh, the video with Jimmy, um, you will see he kind of notches these areas out. Now, I'm going to stop the sketch for a second so you can kind of see what we have here. Um, now I'm ready to start extruding things out, but each each thing is going to be its own component. So there's two different ways you could kind of handle this. Um, one would be to right click here and, uh, and say a new component. And this would kind of like be my top profile. So you see how it has a little fish eye there, right? It's active. What means that if I go in and now and hit Q for press pull, and I select these two entities and drag them out, um, that will now end up, and I'm just going to let it go for a second. That my that will just let it be this component, and you will see that there's no sketch in in this profile uh, here because we we have these right in the top, and now it became a an assembly. Uh, so now we have the first component inside of the assembly. But my point is that the the sketches that's going to drive everything in here are in the top end. You will see just in a second what that means. Now, another way I could do this, let me just delete this component. Like it was never there. Deletes. Another way we could do this is we could actually just without right clicking, create new component, we could also just hit Q, select the two entities and drag out. But then instead of doing new body, see we're back to just being one, uh, one component right now, select new component in the dropdown from the extrude command. And it will, when we hit okay, it will then create that new component. So just two different ways to do it. Not super important which way you select. Um, I'm gonna hit direction, symmetrical, and I'm gonna switch the measurement to be the total length of this bar and make that the same we did to the other 635. Boom, now we get that component right there. Um, that's kind of the top rail of our um, of our part. So I'm gonna rename it, slowly left click, and I'm gonna call it top profile. So the important thing to understand about this, if, if this is new to you, is that these sketches up here are driving the components inside of here. And as I'm gonna show you, if you have never seen this before, this can really be a nice way to lay this kind of kind of stuff out. Um, what means that if I go again and hit the little fish eye next to top profile, you will see there's no sketch in here, in this profile, because it's driven by this top uh, sketch, right? So if I right click on that and say edit sketch, if I go in and change this angle to 50, hit enter, you will see that my profile component is driven from that top sketch, 
but means that it updated, right? So these sketches are, are really driving everything and they can really be handy when you're laying things out. You can also, by the way, if you didn't know this tip, right click on a, on a sketch and say show dimension and they will show up out here. That can kind of be nice too when you're working like this. Um, so it just reminds you of working with these top profiles. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, you could at any time add more um, top sketches if you want to. You just gotta make sure that you have the fish eye the right place. See, if I activate the top profile and I create a new sketch, it will be inside of this top profile, which means the sketch will be down here. If I want it to be a layout sketch, I need to make sure that the top is, uh, is activated and then everything is kind of in here. So I'm gonna lay over a new sketch. I'm gonna select the same, uh, t um, the same plane I did before for the profile. And this one here is gonna control the length of the lag. So I'm gonna create a line. I'm gonna make sure the line snaps into um, the bottom of our profile here. And I'm just gonna sketch it. I'm gonna make it at a weird angle, like this down to about here. So just one line. Um, I'm gonna do two uh, constraints to this one. One's gonna be collinear. And there's some people who made comments to me that they get a little bit confused about these different constraints. Um, so collinear means that if you select two lines, they're gonna be in line with each other. So if I select this edge here and then the line we just created, notice how these two are now in line. Kind of like what I want the, the, uh, the leg to be. Um, another thing I'm gonna do down here um, at the bottom here is I am gonna make this leg um, horizontal with the origin. Doom. Okay, right there. So now these two are horizontal and this is cold little me up here. I'm gonna stop this sketch. It's not really a very exciting sketch, but you will see in a second why I need it. And I'm gonna call it leg length, okay? Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the next uh, component, but it's going to be um, this the leg that's gonna be sitting here. Um, and that's when I'm gonna be needing this length to control that. So I'm gonna create a new, I'm gonna create a, this case here, let's actually create a brand new component. So right click, new component, and let's name it, leg, <laughs> that's a good name, leg. Um, and not, you can absolutely use sketches within these. Um, in this layout, you can do both. You can use these sketches to drive things, but you can for sure also have sketches within each component. So I'm gonna click a new sketch and select that angular surface right here. And you will see, it's maybe a little bit hard to see right now on the screen, but, but I'm looking at this in an angle. If you're looking up at the view cube, view that as a reference. Because I selected that angular face on the profile, I am looking at this at an angle. Um, and many times when I'm sketching inside a fusion, I'm just gonna take the line tool, I actually like to just sketch out to, to the side here. That's gonna be my leg right there. So it's kind of like out on the side. Um, and I'm gonna give it two dimensions. I'm gonna hit D for dimension. I'm gonna make sure this one here is 50. And I'm gonna select this one here to be 100. Boom. That is my leg here. Now, when you sketched it up, um, there's a couple of different ways you can move this sketch around. Now, I could grab this corner and start moving, but notice what happened, kind of like things flips upside down. Um, that can be because things are not fully defined. That can be a little bit hard to work with. You could right click and select move copy. And normally we only use this one, I think, uh, on, on components or bodies, but it actually also works on sketches. I can totally highlight the sketch here and do one of my favorite, what is point to point over here. And I could select here to that intersection over there and it would actually move it over there. Now, one thing to be aware of though, when you do that, that move is not recorded down in the timeline and some people's gonna be like, that's exactly uh, what I wanted. Um, and uh, the other thing, you should know is that it's not it's not locked down. If I select 
this line here, I can completely move it. So the move command can be a nice way to move it, but it's gonna not gonna it's not gonna lock it down. The way to lock it down is totally using constraints. So I'm gonna select coincident and I'm gonna select that point and that same point and boom, now you will see it's gonna move it over here um, and it's gonna be constrained into that corner where I want it. Now if this is, if you're a little bit confused where I'm heading with this, I hope you got it just in a second. Um, now with this done, now I'm actually ready to kind of control the length of this leg here and that's where I needed that sketch. But sadly, for some reason, um, the horizontal restraint, this line to this point won't catch each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit P for project and just project that point. Now it works. And that was that, that, that point there is the leg length sketch. So now if I select horizontal from here to here, Oops, or maybe not. This line, um, what did we do? Did I get that? Okay. Horizontal. Fail to solve, please revising dimensions and constraints. What did I do? Somebody. Why did I suddenly get that one? Fail to solve. Okay. P for project. We want that point. Okay. And horizontal from here to here. All right, that'll work. I don't know why the line wasn't working, but the point will work. That's all I need. So where I'm at here, if I'm spinning this around a little bit, is that... I sketched this sketch on that face. So it was kind of like in an angle. So I needed that point for the length there. And you will see just in a second why I needed that. Um, now with this leg, now we only have a sketch in there, driven this whole thing. I am going to uh, project, uh, to extrude it. So I hit Q and I'm gonna select this here and this portion. If I zoom in, um, now we can give this some thickness. Um, there's probably some, uh, I don't know how thick the material Jimmy used, but I wanted to show, notice that I can, I can, if you pull this arrow, you can control the length by just selecting a point. Boom, now those two matches up. That's what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do here. Hit okay, and I created the first, um, the first leg. Now, <laughs> I hope this is useful. Uh, now I wanna show you, give you, this was a long, chat to give you some of the, the neat things about having uh, these uh, controlling areas. For example, if we go back into our right profile, that second sketch we created, and I say edit sketch, remember this one? If I go in and I change this 75 to 50, look what the leg does. The leg is following that first sketch. So they can be extremely useful to lay things out this way. So when customers comes and make changes, you know that these first couple of sketches are driving um, a lot of things. Second of all, if we look at, um, this is gonna be the flaw, and we look at the length, this is the flaw, see how the leg kinda like, it's gonna sit right on the corner? We don't want that, right? We want it to be in an angle um, like flat with the floor. It would be a silly sawhorse if it's just resting right in that corner. Um, so again, if we go into the, to the leg length sketch and edit that, right click and edit sketch, by mistake, I made this horizontal with this point when we drew this, when we drew this line, collinear line up. If I just select that um, constraint there, the horizontal constraint and hit delete on my keyboard, now I can drag it further down and I could hit D on my keyboard and give it some kind of a random uh, dimension that now means that when I stop the sketch, you will see that this lag now goes past. So 
the right profile is controlling how much this leg will go on an angle and the leg length will actually yes control kind of the leg length i could also make that dimension going from of course the top up here so we're going to cut these uh, uh, to length in a little bit later i'm going to make a point about that later so notice that um we just went ahead and we made uh the first leg here okay uh but of course we want more than than one leg now if you have watched some of my previous live streams you might go into uh, the leg here make that active uh, you could go in and do a mirror and i many times talk about how i like to use uh, features so now we could select features we could select that extrude we did of the leg um the mirror plane here could be this plane right here and hit okay and now we got the second leg but in this case what i ended up with was not a leg but legs because now this one have two bodies within it and that's actually not quite what i want i actually want four independent component legs uh, because tomorrow we're going to make the work drawing for this and we're going to make a bill of material so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go backwards by deleting this mirror for a second go up and make our whole assembly active and then go back in and do the mirror again but instead of selecting features you can select components again i'm trying to point out that there's a lot of different options inside of fusion um and 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 they're good so i'm going to select components i'm going to select that as a component instead of a feature i'm going to mirror that over this plane hit enter and now you will see that we get, you know, a leg over that. Um, and then I could actually just right click, repeat mirror, repeat component, select those two components, and now mirror those over that other plane. Boom. And now we got four legs and four different components in here. And I actually like to leave these just because they remind me that these was all mirrored across. Going back to my point, if you came a little bit late, about why uh, using layout designs, a master model, whatever you want to call this, um, is that we have so much control. Again, I go back into the second sketch we cre I created, the right profile. If I go back in and change this to 50, all the legs are now updated from this. So I hope that this makes sense. This is extremely, um, it, it, it's, I almost look like these sketches here, um, the free sketches we right now have the side view, the right side profile and the leg sketch. They're almost like the paper napkin and they're driving all these different ones. Now, if you're now feeling like I'm getting a lot of things in the way here we can always turn these off if you want to and we can kind of see how this uh sawhorse is coming together again this is uh jimmy Daresta's sawhorse big <laughs> i'm a big fan of his um and the link for his video is down in the description area absolutely recommend that you check out his youtube video he model up these sawhorses and then come watch this here and then come back in the commentary and tell me what i'm missing uh out of his video uh, that could be a fun little game last thing i gotta do on this here um is i'm gonna add a couple of end caps to this um and again using you can either choose to put the sketches inside the the um inside of the the the, the component but using these layout sketches by having the top uh, active it just makes it easier when the customers come back with, with changes so i'm going to create another sketch I'm going to create it on this plane here and and to make the end caps i'm literally just going to create a line and i'm going to snap it into the outside here somewhere i'm going to make it horizontal well it doesn't really matter i'm going to snap make sure i snap into the other leg then i can make it horizontal like that and then it's going to be full defined right it's going to be black and i'm going to drive that with d for dimension one dimension from here to here let's make that 250 and stop that sketch now it's very simple it's really only one line 
and the purple ones are projected. So Fusion projects, projects those sketches over um, and they are really just uh, references for the software. I'm gonna slow left click on that sketch so I can edit it and I'm gonna call that end caps just so I know where things are. If I right click and do edit, uh, do show dimension, then I can kind of see that 250 over there that can help me. So now to create the X, the end caps, I'm gonna right click new component, I'm gonna rename that one, end cap. And then I can open a new sketch. I'm gonna do that right on the end. And then I'm literally just gonna hit P, whoops, I assume I took a second there. I'm gonna hit P for project, and I'm gonna borrow that edge and that edge. And then because things are a little bit uh, adjusted up here, I'm gonna hit L for line, create a line from here to that end point, and create another one from this end point up to that end point. We kind of get the shaded area, means we can project this. P for uh, Q to project this. So like these two, and we can now give this some kind of a, a thickness, five millimeters, for example. And now we have uh, this end cap. But again, the reason I'm doing that is because this end cap is driven by this, this sketch here. What makes, if you know that all, most of your dimensions are coming out of these sketches, just makes it easier. Let me copy this one uh, or mirror it. So I'm gonna make the top um, assembly active. Go to mirror, select component, that end cap over the center. Doom, so now we got an end cap or an end cap mirror, right? So I hope that this gives you an idea about kind of like laying this out. I'm actually gonna go one step further. So if you have five more minutes, I'm gonna show you a couple of other tricks with this. Um, but again, my point is if I go into that second sketch we created, edit sketch and I change the angle here to 50 or any of the other dimensions in here, the end plate and the legs updates, okay? Uh, we still gotta cut the legs links too, too. So we still have a few things to do here. I'm gonna run a little bit over. Uh, let's go back here and make this back to 75. So before we, we, we go anywhere, let's talk about cutting uh, these legs um, to length because remember I made the link leg length longer than here. So what I could do was I could go into uh, the modify and I could select split body and I could select the four legs and then I could say splitting tool and I could select this plane. That's for, for some reason it's only showing up on one leg, but that's okay. I hit okay and you will see that it split each of these legs. Now it did this in each leg. So if I go into leg number one and I go into bodies, you will see in here that body number one is that little knobbin down there. And I could now right click and hit not delete because that would heal it, but remove. And that will make that now flat to the floor. But if I do it this way, I would have to go into each leg and do the same thing. And you guys know that I'm lazy when it comes to CAD and CAM. So let me just go back here and delete that split body. And don't forget that this history line is true inside of Fusion. So if I grab this little handle, roll all the way back to where we created that first leg and now create that break so modify split body select the leg select the split tool hit that okay there's a little nubbin let's go in and right click and remove it not delete remove it right kind of what i just did before but because it's happening here in the timeline before the mirrors check this out now it was done on the three other ones because they came after in the timeline. And now they're nice um, and flat to this. So this here um, is, is a super helpful way. We are now driving everything besides um, that angle and the width of this portion, what we could have done, 
but that's the only thing but we are driving inside of the leg uh, body so if you came in um, a little late to this one I hope that this somewhat made sense in a way that you can model things up I think this is to me this is extremely powerful way to lay things out everything is controlled in sketches and everything rattles down to uh, to the component now I'm gonna take three more minutes um, because um, I want to I want to kind of wrap this up as an assembly as it is right now because as some of you guys have already figured out now where this is uh, components they are all floating around in space not uh, not really what we want uh, in here um, so all I'm gonna do to uh, to kind of lock this down is I am going to decide um, how things are locked in so I'm, the top profile I'm gonna decide that that one is grounded and I like to use ground because then I get a little thumbtack over here that tells me which one is grounded and then I can literally go in here and I could either make it a rigid group um, or you can say built as a joint um, but rigid group would probably be the least heavy um, at this point so now I could go in here and say rigid group and I could select um, all components like this here hit OK and now we'll get a rigid group here that means that they now are all locked in so this would be like that Jimmy uses his uh, wood glue to, uh, to glue it in but in the video I know that you will tell me that Jimmy also used uh, some screws to kind of hold this in. So I'm going to add those. So I'm actually going to get rid of this rigid group for a second. So we're back to uh, where we just have uh, kind of like grounded one of them. And I'm going to go in here and say insert, insert McMaster. And uh, looking at the video, I'm pretty sure that Jimmy used drywall screws. Again, I could be wrong. <laughs> but that's what it looks like to me. Um, these don't come in inches. For, um, I guess we don't have drywall in the United States. Inch and a half is the standard length, I think, for most drywall screws. I'm going to hit product detail. I'm going to go down, make the window a little bit bigger so you can see it. I'm going to go down here and select step file and hit save. And it's going to bring in that uh, drywall screw. Now, I actually need one two three four five six seven eight but i'm just gonna bring one in and it comes down here on the origin that's fine hit okay so that's it's right there um and i'm actually gonna use the joint um for this so um i could actually have let the left the rigid group i guess select joint um and i'm gonna just select the center here of uh, of this point here right there and I'm going to select the second area right up here. So then the screw is going to move over there. Uh, I'm going to flip the direction. And then I'm just going to, I'm not going to make any holes here because this is a wood screw. So I'm just going to kind of place it where I want it. So let's place it 15 down and minus 75. So where I place this one on here on the origin, then I offset it by using these dials over here. And okay, so that's, uh, so there's a screw and I'm just assuming you're screwing this one right in. Uh, now I could actually um, create a, uh, a copy of this. So if I select that screw over there, that's the part number, control C, control V. Now I have my second screw. I'm just gonna drag the handle over Let's go minus 150. So that is my second screw, right? And, um, and now I'm just going to do what I did before. So I'm going to go in and select these two screws. Control, select them. Create, mirror. And those two components are going to be mirrored over this plane. Hit OK, right? And now I can select those. Hold down Shift, select all these. Right click, repeat mirror, select those four over there, hit OK. And now we have 
uh, all the screws in there. Now again, because this is wooden screws, I'm not gonna drill the holes or anything like that. Um, but what I do have to do though, again, is I have to get that rigid group uh, back in. That is easy enough. Um, I could actually just probably select all the components over in the tree here. All these as a uh, rigid group like that. Now they are all selected, nothing moves anymore. And uh, to wrap this up, I am going to do a right click appearances. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to be pine. Doom. We got some pine glossy there. And the easiest thing is probably just to drag that onto uh, all the wooden components. Do, do, do. Back plates there. So now we got that appearance. Now you can see that the appearance is just repeats. And that makes it look a little, I don't know. It look, I mean, it's too easy to see that they repeat. So don't forget, you can always right click on appearance, hit edit. And this is probably not so important, uh, but we could go ahead here and we could maybe scale it up and rotate it maybe a little bit. There, now it actually looks, now it doesn't look like it comes out of the exact same, exact same piece, does it? And we'll rotate it just a little bit more. Do, 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 do. Ah, I'm going to leave it with that. So, um, I hope that this was useful, friends. Um, definitely 40 minutes. I don't think that was too bad to lay this thing out, do you? Um, so, again, the point of this... Let me turn the origin off. The, the, so, down in the description area is Jimmy DeResta's video. I Like I said in the beginning, if you came in late, I love Jimmy DeResta's videos. I always learn something new by seeing how he model things. And that is actually what I'm hoping to do with these two. Um, so again, if we expand the sketches here, these sketches are driving everything, right? So if I go in now, if my customer comes and says, well, you know, I think these sauces are cool, but I really wish that they, the gap was a little narrower, I could go in and right click and hit edit sketch. And uh, if we went instead of 75, if we went 85, uh, and we hit stop the sketch, you will see oh, that something happened right there in the, in the extrusion, but you will see that everything uh, follows. See, this is what happens when I change it. What happens if we go back to our 50 degrees, really wide ones? Yeah, those appear for some reason. Something happens to that sketch. Ooh, now things are actually not... Oh, that is probably because I did these... Um, this rigid group is interfering with this right now. So what you would have to do is undo, undo, undo. Let's go to 75, like that there. And this is what happens when I don't test things. This is the, the price with live streaming. Edit the sketch. Um, yeah. Now I'm gonna have to come back and find out what I did so this is the sketch. See how this here, that sketch is uh, is not looking. It lost its reference. It looks like that and that. Now it should be on there. Now it's on there. Now I got rid of the rigid group uh, just because I got to test this now. Let's go back in and the sketch. So I'll make it 50 again. So now it comes up. Now that's interesting that these uh, legs are coming out afterwards. I am not sure what that is, but these are following now. I guess that's my, uh, that is my, my point here. Um, I'm already way over what I normally do. Um, so these, if you look at this, they are in the leg mirror. What should... See, that's happened for this leg here. Mirror, mirror. I don't know why they get generated in this one. 
there. Edit. I can't help myself. I gotta go and look at it. So that component. Okay. I think that Fusion just maybe lost its place. See, now they went away. I think it got a little bit confused. So right now I'm wondering if Rigid Group messes this up. So you might do, because now Rigid Group is off again because I just deleted it. So you might need to do Rigid Group like this. Now they're all Rigid Group. If you need to make any changes to this, you might have to go back here. I'm suspecting that this is the issue. If I go back here and do the 50. Oh, then they do. It does lose something there, but I would do this and then I'll move forward and activate the rigid group again. I think that that might be your answer. I'm not quite sure why that one keeps on losing it. If I go in and edit it and hit OK again, then it fixes itself. So that might be something in the code. All right, enough of this. I hope that this was useful um, for a, it's Monday. So maybe that, maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe it's because it's a Monday. I hope this was useful, friends. Uh, 128 people in here. It's always good when, when things go wrong, right? And I have to, uh, to mess around with it. That was live stream number 170. Thank you, Jimmy DeResta, for all your awesome videos. And, uh, you know, I, I hope it's okay that I'm borrowing these. Um, definitely go and check out his link video down in the description area. That is, uh, that's, go check it out. Subscribe to his channel. You will learn something. Always learn something. If you like this content, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest. Thumbs down. Let me know down in the comments area of anything. These are an attempt to make add more value to you. So uh, any of your feedback is uh, is absolutely helpful. I think tomorrow we're going to jump in and make a bit of material of this part, and we are going to do. Um, uh, some drawings of them because I think that could be kind of fun. And maybe I figured out uh, uh, what is happening with the solving at that time. That's it, folks. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much. I'm going to sign off. And if you're inside of the live stream, I'm going to jump in there in the chat and say hi to everybody. Until tomorrow, have an awesome, awesome day. Take care, folks.